This is like a starting point for reading. Like if you want to get into reading, these are the genres, series, authors, books that I think you should start with because they've changed my life. Hello everyone and welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah. We are going to be doing a video that I haven't done in a while, which is a recommendations video. I feel like I've read a decent amount of books at this point that I am qualified enough to say my absolute top genres, books, authors, and series. I feel like I have compiled a great list of all of the top, top, top with all the books that I have at my disposal. I wanted to do a full ultimate book recommendations video. If you're wondering where to start with reading, then I think that these books, these series, these authors are a great great place to start and if you're in a book slump these are great books to read great authors to go to for me these are the books that i go to and the authors that i go to when i am in a book slump they always pull me out of it without fail we are going to do our top book rec i feel like summertime is a good time to get into reading because people have more time and people are reading at the beach i just feel like summertime is a great place to start with reading if you're thinking about getting to reading. I actually have four categories. First are the top genres and when to read them. Basically, I go through the four seasons and what genres are my favorites to read in those seasons and why. And then I have my top authors. These are authors that I will immediately read or buy literally anything they write. The books that I've read from these authors, I've loved them. They have all had a spot in my reading journey. Then we have our top series. One, two, three, four, five series that I will always love and whenever I look at them they will always bring up a feeling of like nostalgia or immense happiness, immense sadness, or just the need to be in that world. That is what these series are. Then we finally have our top books. I will reread read these books until the day I die. If you're asking for a book recommendation, these, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books are the ones that are my favorite books that I've read so far. These are the ones that I will always recommend you. And it is so exciting because I love talking about books and talking about my favorite books and series and authors. Can't get better than that. This is a great video to film. First, starting with top authors. Again, these are ones that I immediately read and buy literally anything they write. So here are the Emily Henry books that I have on hand for right now. We have Beach Read, Book Lovers, Happy Place, and Funny Story. Emily Henry, I just love the way that she writes. I love the way that her books can make me feel so much. I feel like the way that she writes her characters, the way that she writes her romances is so immersive. Like you get so inside the characters' heads and her characters are so relatable that it really has such an effect on me. Honestly, Happy Place, this is the book that made me fall in love with Emily Henry's writing. I liked Beach Read, but I really, really loved Happy Place. I want to read this again in the summertime. Emily Henry, definite immediate buy for me. She writes just the best romances that I've ever read. Hello, editing Sarah here. I wanted to cut in in this Emily Henry portion to say that I also really like how her female main characters are always sort of going through something more personal, more internal. It's not always about the romance, but the romance is so good. I was not lying when I said that, but I do feel like because she fully lets you in to her female main character's heads, it just makes the story and the romance so much more relatable and interesting and gives it more depth. And I feel like Emily Henry is good with doing that because the main character is always sort of dealing with something else that has nothing to do with the romance. Anything she writes, I know I'm going to fall in love with and I know I am going to fall in love with the characters. All right, next, of course. Look, I have all of her series here, but I'm just going to hold one because I cannot hold three massive series right now. I do not have the strength. The next author whoa, is... Sarah J Maas, of course, like I said, fantasy is my comfort genre. I love fantasy books. She writes the best fantasy books. I'm sorry, she writes the best ones, in my opinion. So this is the Actar series. This is her famous, famous series. 
This is the series that everyone starts with. This is the series that got me back into reading a couple years ago when I read A Court of Lords and Roses. If you haven't heard about Akita already, I don't know what side of dinner you are on, but this is step one of book talk, is Akatar. <laughs> and it's basically about fairy and humans. They have separate areas of the world. Feyre is a human and she actually, something happens where she has to go into the fairy realms. She then goes into the fairy realms with Tamlin and things about from there. I don't want to spoil it because it's the best series ever. I do not want to spoil any part of it for you. A Court Akawar is my favorite. She also has the Crescent City novels and she has Throne of Glass, which I have right here. And I have yet to read Crescent City or Throne of Glass, but that is also by Sarah J. Maas. So definitely, no question, Sarah J. Maas. Any fantasy book she writes, because she really only writes fantasy, I think, I will buy immediately. Next, we have Lauren Asher. This is her three series that I think these are the books, I have every single book she has out right now, I'm pretty sure. This is the Dirty Air series. It's an F1 racing romance series. And I had a weird relationship. If you've been here for a while, you know that I've had a weird relationship with the Dirty Air series since I've read it, or like when I was reading it. But something about it, I think about it every day. I had such a weird thing about where some of the books only got three stars, some of the books irritated me, but I think about her characters every single day. I have to say that. She is definitely one of my top authors. And then we have her Dream One Billionaire series, which are these three. And this is about three brothers, and it is also a romance series. Each brother has their own book, and their father owns basically Disneyland, but it's called Dreamland in this. And all three brothers are given a task they have to achieve to get their like share of the company when the grandfather passes. It is so good. And I think Final Offer has to be my favorite. And then we have Love Redesigned. This is her newest book that's out. This is her newest series. It's the Lakefront Billionaire series. This takes place at the same in Wisteria Lake. Lake Wisteria, which is the same lake that the final offer took place on, and this is about the lake about billionaires, and this is another romance, and I have to read it. I am so excited to read it because, like I said, Lauren Asher, one of my favorite authors, I just feel like her characters and her writing is like oddly nostalgic to me in some way, and I really liked watching her grow from like her Dirty Air series all the way up to the Dreamland Billionaire series and now the Love to Redesigned a Lakefront Billionaire series. I've just loved watching her grow as a writer. So she's my next favorite author. Immediate buy. Next we have my most recent favorite author, which is Miss Elsie Silver. Oof. I have her Chestnut Spring series. I also have her newest series, The Wild Love. I don't know what the series is called, Rose Hill maybe? But I have her newest one too. And she writes cowboy romances. I feel like her romances are just so captivating and so easy to read, so easy to get through. I think that Heartless is my favorite Chestnut Spring series. I've only read these three, but I feel like Heartless is definitely my favorite of those three. I still have to read these two. And then of course, Wild Love. But just her romances just make me want to be in the setting where the characters are and the way that her characters are written, the way that her male main characters are written are just so amazing and beautiful and perfect. The characters always like struggle with something internally and just seeing them grow from those struggles and how they like literally complete each other, her characters and her romances, it's just, I love it. She is definitely a summer author. I feel like, like read her books during the summer. That is the best time to read them. I need a drink of water. Last favorite author, Stephanie Garber. I have her Caraval trilogy here, her finale. I'm gonna read on my TBR, so it's right here. But this is her Caraval trilogy. And then I also have her Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. Once I finish the Caraval trilogy, I'm going to dive right into the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. Her fantasies have a way of just 100% immersing me in them. And her writing and her descriptions of the worlds that she writes are beautiful and gorgeous and they seem like they should be in a little fairy tale land. The way she writes is just so fairy tale. I can get lost in her books and picture them so clearly and that is why I love books. Q I Hate It Here by Taylor Swift. I have been looking forward to reading the Once Heart Broken Heart series but I did want to get through Caraval and we are on the last book so we are getting there. So yeah, those are my favorite authors of all time. Love, love, love them so, so much. Starting with the top genres. First, Summer. The genre that I love to read in summer is romance. Just like point blank period, I love romance books in summer. There are so many good 
romance books out there to read during the summertime. Romances are perfect books to just grab and read at the beach, just throw in your tote bag when you're traveling around, enjoying the beautiful weather, and you can just pull it out and read it. These are not books that you super have to, it's like a whole world building you have to really focus on. They're just easy reads that I think are perfect in the summertime. Some of my favorite romances, Chestnut Spring series, all romances, love those. One-off romances I feel like are even good. Like some that I have on my list for this summer, The Summer After You and Me. This is a book that's on my TBR for this month. Easy, quick, beach read. And then another book that I really like to read in the summer, Float by Kate Marchand. I read this book in the summertime. I feel like it gives just the perfect summery romance vibe. It's also a little bit nostalgic. Better than the movies. Love this book. Those are the type of romances I mean. Fun, summery, but usually just like one-off romances are my favorite to read in the summertime. Moving to fall, of course, this is when I like to read thrillers slash mysteries. I don't know the difference between the two, really. Fantasies. I am a huge fantasy reader. Fantasy is actually where I started reading, and then I just recently got into romance, like maybe like a year ago. I read like strictly fantasy up until a year ago, so I'm a huge fantasy reader. I feel like something about the fall time, when the weather's not too cold, but it's cold enough where you want to spend some time inside. Something about fantasy screams fall and winter to me. The fantasies that I recommend you read in the fall. Fourth Wing, of course. I'll talk about this book later on, but this is a fantasy series that has two books. This is Fourth Wing and also Iron Flame and that is like the fantasy that I feel like is perfect in the fall. It also takes place in a school so I feel like that's great for fall time. And then Mysteries and Thrillers. This book series the Naturals is a young adult thriller mystery series. I read all these books and I feel like this is a great series to get into in the fall time. They're quick and easy to read but they're also very immersive and you know there's a mystery writing throw and I feel like when it's fall time you really want to dive into like the mystery genre as well. Mystery thriller, fantasy for fall. And then winter, like I said, I love fantasies during winter and I also love those like cozy romances. Like not really the romances I'm not talking about like Chestnut Springs or Float, but like cozier romances. Divine Rivals. I feel like this is a great winter book. This is actually a fantasy series, but it's also a fantasy romance series, so it takes both boxes for my winter reading. So Divine Rivals, I highly recommend. Get cozy, like there's a lot happening, but it's not, it's just the vibe of it is so cozy in, in a way, even though it's like sad sometimes. Also, I really like the Kingdom of the Wicked series around winter time because it's a fantasy as well, a darker fantasy that I feel like fit perfectly in winter time to get into these books and I feel like honestly a lot of the setting in these books is in winter time so if you haven't read the Kingdom of the Wicked series highly recommend that for winter time. Hi it's me again. I kind of like didn't really give you any cozy romances. I don't know why I just kind of skipped over it and went right to romanticy. I guess like romanticy was like on my mind but I'll pop up on the screen here some of the cozy romances that I mean. Not really just holiday romances, which are obviously perfect to read during the wintertime, but also romances that just give you the cozy vibe. And I don't know how else to say it besides showing you the books I mean. So yeah. <laughs> and then finally in spring, I tend towards romances and also thrillers. Weirdly, in this spring, I was like really into the thrillers. Some that I really liked this spring was The Fury. This one was so good to have in the springtime because it takes place on an island. In spring, I tend toward romance and thriller. Thriller for some reason, romance, definitely because like everything's blooming, everything's happy because it's gonna be warm out after being so cold for so many months. So yeah, those are my top genres. And now finally moving on to our top series. The first one had to be Harry Potter. I have basically a whole shelf dedicated to Harry Potter. Let me bring you down. First, I want to say, just because I love the series does not mean that I support the writer. <laughs> because although J.K. Rowling wrote A Beautiful Amazing World, I do not agree with some of the things that she said. So, let's just put that out there. We're just gonna pretend that Harry Potter just happened, okay? We're not gonna talk about the writer. This is my little Harry Potter shelves. I have the pop-up books. They only have three out by Mina Lima. I have these and they have fun little pop-ups and things like that. And then I have the Harry Potter cookbook. I have the American version of the Half-Blood Prince. I have all seven of the books for from the British version because I actually got this fourth one and like 
I think the first one when I was actually in London and then I ordered the rest online. So I got those ones and then I also have the Cursed Child. I have two versions of the Cursed Child because I saw this on Broadway with my mom and I was immediately obsessed with it so I got both versions. The big box version of the like books that are in the films and the series. This is Quidditch the Ages. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and then The Tales of Beetle the Bard. It's just like big versions of the books and that are in the series and I love them. And then we have The Wizarding Almanac over here, you know, has a whole bunch of information about the Harry Potter world and I love it. And then we have all five, because we only have five out right now, we have five of the Jim K versions. And these are just like big, like basically like storybook versions. They have pictures and they have like, you know, of course the actual book throughout. To say that uh, Harry Potter is one of my favorite series is a bit of an understatement. <laughs> Let me bring you back up. This series is massive, as you know, and it is so magical and it's nostalgic and it reminds me of going to theater and watching with my parents like on midnight releases when they came out. I read all the books when I was a kid. I watched the movies over and over again all the time. The lore surrounding them is crazy. The fans have made like the martyrs an entire lore around something that doesn't exist in the actual series. That is crazy. <laughs> Love the Wizarding World. Harry Potter is just always gonna be that series for me. And then we have the Empyrean series which is a fourth wing and I am flame. I also have the, you know, holiday edition of fourth wing, but these are the editions that I read and tabbed. Fourth wing has put me in a chokehold since I read it one and a half years ago and it has not released me since. I am obsessed with this series. I think about these characters all the time. Zayden, he is the top book boyfriend. I'm sorry, he has, no one has dethroned him. He is amazing, and that is why I'm so scared for the third book, Onyx Storm. That comes out, it's already pre-ordered, and I'm so excited. Fantasy, dragons, enemies to lovers, everything. Amazing. I love this series so, so much. And of course, we have Akatar. I should have just kept this series out. We have Akatar, and I'm not going to pull it out because I just talked about it a lot in the other section, but this is one of my favorite series ever. Like I said, this got me back into reading, and I just love Feyre's story, her transformation throughout the story. I love the chorus of her flames as well. I love Nesta's story and her transformations throughout it. It's just such an amazing world. It has the fantasy and it has the romance. Akatar created the bad boy love interest in fantasies in my mind. And I will forever be grateful for that, for this book and this series. I feel like with these characters, I genuinely like, care about every single character in like the inner circle and every single character that is mentioned in here. I would read stories about every single one of them because I just love them so much. So that's our guitar. For the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy, I did briefly mention this one. Specifically, these two are my favorites. The first one is good, but these two, specifically the third one, is like my favorite. I think about Wrath all the time. I think about the way that this book ended all the time. I love the way they ended this trilogy. I am so excited about these books. This is the first one, The Throne of the Fall. This is Envy's story. This is another Prince of Hell because this involves the Kingdom of Wicked, involves Wrath, and this involves Envy. And this is like his story, and I'm so excited to read this one. I'm saving it for fall because, like I said, I like reading fantasies in fall. I am so, so excited to get into Envy's story, and I want to read a book for all the other princes of hell, and I think she's planning on it, so I'm super excited for that. And then next, I have these books back here, but I am just going to bring one out. The Click. So, the Click, literally. This is Revenge of the Wannabes. This series will always hold a special place in my heart. I don't know if I'm gonna ever read them again. I might. This series I read when I was in like middle school or something and I was obsessed with this series. I would go to the library and get the new one every time it came out. I watched the movie so many times when I was younger and this series just brings about such a nostalgia to me and I am forever grateful for that. This is like my childhood series. If it wasn't Harry Potter, it was The Click. So The Click will always have a special place in my heart and I might read them I have a feeling that now in my like older 20s brain, I would not be entertained as much by this or like agree with how mean these girls are to each other. But just, it just, it has a special spot in my heart. And that's that. So I forgot to mention one series that actually changed my life. And I don't know how I forgot to say it. I realized this later on in the video, so here's that clip. 
Wait, I didn't say Magnolia Parks in here at series. <gasps> That's a crime! Magnolia Parks is absolutely one of my favorite series. I am so sorry that I forgot about them. Oh my god! I am obsessed with Magnolia Park series. Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot them to put in my favorite series. But yes, absolutely, in my favorite series, Magnolia Parks. Those are my favorite series. Oh my god, I'm so hot. I'm talking so much right now. Last section. I've been talking your ear up. I'm surprised my camera's still recording on it. My camera stopped. Literally, as I said, my camera's still recording. My camera stopped and I had to redo it. So, like I said, I've been talking a lot. We are on to our last section. My top books. My nine favorite books of all time that I have read so far. The books that I will reread over and over and over again and never get sick of. Fourth place. I want to reread this so bad. I already annotated a lot of it, if you can see, but I want to annotate even more. Like, I want to reread this and I want this to be covered in annotations because that is how much I love this world. Violet and Zayden and the dragons, specifically Tarn and Anzarna, they are so fun and I feel like they add such amazing depth or I guess not even depth but just like they just build up the story so much better and again I love Zayden so much and I will always recommend Fourthly to everyone. Like I said, fantasy is my comfort series, and this is the book that I love so much. And then, you know it. Happy Place. <sighs> this book just gives me such nostalgia, and I only read it last year. Again, I annotated the heck out of it, and I think there's one specific page where literally like the entire page is covered in my annotations just because I was obsessed with this scene so much. Such a great, amazing blend of second chance romance and the struggle of growing apart from your friends as you get older, how friends are going in different directions and how you have to become okay with that. Beautiful. And I want to cry thinking about it because it means so much to me. <laughs> and I can't Wait to read it this summer. I got up in Happy Place as one of my top books ever. And then we have a book that I don't hear about a lot, but it's Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the third book in the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy, and it's also my favorite book. It is so amazing the way that this book ended and the build up from the first two books made this book just so much better. I love the turn that the story took. I love how it became so much bigger than I originally thought. How they figured out this like deep rooted thing in their, their twin witches, but how they figured out like this deep rooted thing in their culture and how it relates to the Prince of Hell. It's just amazing. Amazing storytelling, amazing fantasy, and it has to be on my top books because this book was like a very happy surprise. And then, like I said, we have to put in Aqua War by Sarah J Maas. I actually read these books before I started annotating, so I don't really have any annotations here. So if I want to reread it, litter this absolutely with annotations because I know I can. And this is the third book in the Akatar series, and actually the last book in Feyre's point of view right now. And I loved how this book combined the politics and the war but also a lot to say about the other characters that we've come to know and love and Feyre's sisters and the rest of Zayden's, and that's, oh my god, Zayden, I'm still in my fourth wing. The rest of Reese's inner circle, the night court, I want to live there forever. This just gripped me so hard and I wrote like actually like four whole pages when I finished this book because I was just so amazed with how it ended. And then we actually have two books from Magnolia Parks. And look at all of those annotations like hello look how many there are and these two are my favorites in the series we have Magnolia Park's Long Way Home and we have Daisy Hates the Great Undoing first we have Magnolia Park's Long Way Home this is the third book in the MCU like Magnolia or the MP MCU the MPU the Magnolia Park's universe it is told in Magnolia and BJ's point of views I feel like Magnolia and BJ are just such flawed but beautiful characters and even though they can frustrate you when you're reading it, their story is beautiful. Jessa Hastings' writing is beautiful. It just makes me feel all the emotions and I feel them so deeply. So that is our long way home. This is my favorite book for Magnolia. And then we have Daisy Hastings' Grand <laughs> This is, wait, specifically, 
because of Julian's point of view. That is why this is in here. Like for it, for example, let me just read you this. It's the great undoing of my heart as I know it. Better than any woman anyone has ever painted in the history of time. A face I'd win battles for, a face I'd lose anything for, even her. I get, I'm getting chills, I'm getting chills. I love her more than I've ever loved anything, and I thought I might have been able to angle it, find a way for us to work, a life between where I can be who I am, and love her how I do, and it not be the death of her. But it's not in the cards, I'd be the death of her, and I won't be. So it's time. <gasps> I got chills reading that, and let me read you one from this. This is just simple. He's not my every second thought, he's my every thought. He stares at me for a few seconds, and I think if I were to acknowledge the moment in the fullness it deserves, it would weigh differently in my heart, but I don't. <laughs> I just got lost reading these quotes. I gotta stop, because I'll be here all day. But yes, definitely my only parts of Daisy Hates. Top books. <coughs> oh my god, I need to hold up. I need a minute. I don't think I've ever talked so much in a video. We only have three more. We only have three more. So next we have The Invisible Life of Abby in the Room. This is a special edition that I bought because I love this book so much. And it has little pictures on the inside and I love it. Also, if you've read this book, March 13th, you know what March 13th means? That's also my birthday. And it's such a big date in this book and it is my birthday and that is another reason why I just fell in love with it. This is about Abby the Room and she makes a deal with a god that basically has her live forever, but no one can remember her. Once they close the door, once she leaves the room, they forget about her automatically. It's just going through life with that curse on you and she can't get out of it. And that's how she's been living. But one day, someone does remember her. That is what this book is about. It is beautiful. It made me cry. The deeper meanings behind it, the ending, oh my god it made me cry. And this writing is just so beautiful. Again, it's like that lyrical writing and I love that writing so much. Addie is an amazing character, but the god is a recurring and fun character. An interesting character I should say. The way that V.E. Schraub interwove everything is just beautiful and I want to reread this book so bad. Our last two, Daisy Jones and the Six and Love In Other Words. These two books, Daisy Jones and the Six, TV show that I've watched several times. I've listened to the album many times. It was in my top three songs ever, Honeycomb. The way this book is told, it's actually in like an interview format. Beautiful, amazing quotes, flawed characters right person wrong time the little bit the story of fleetwood mac i think it takes uh inspiration from fleetwood mac daisy and billy are just such flawed amazing characters in this the formation of a rock band is basically what this is about i'm obsessed with it and i highly recommend listening to it in an audiobook because it actually has like actors for all the different people that are in this and it makes it so much more real like and i like refuse to believe this is not a real band like how did Taylor Jenkins Reid make this band up in her head? Like, this is a real band. It has to be a real band. I can't believe, I cannot believe that. And then next we have Love and the Words. This book I credit for getting me into romance because it is one of the first romance books that I read and I fell in love with it. It is about Macy and Elliot. It's just such a beautiful romance, friends to lovers, but also there's a break in between. They have a library together when they're little and it's so fun. The way that Elliot and Macy are together is perfect and beautiful and amazing. This is the first book that I annotated because there were quotes in here that I simply couldn't not annotate. There was no way I could just read these words and not tab them to come back to later because they are so beautiful. So yeah, that is Love in Other Words. That is the end. Those are my top genres. Those are my top series, authors, and books of all time. I have been talking your ear off. So thank you so much if you've stayed until this point. I just really wanted to put all the book recommendations in one video. I am so thankful for every single one of them. I'm gonna go because I really feel like I am gonna lose my voice because I've been talking so much. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you've read them, if you read them. That's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.